everyone. My name is Audrey. My last name is pronounced Ferrara. Um, I am here to share my food journey with you. Um, I am an arts and letters major at Portland State. Um, this is my last year at Portland State, which is why I'm in the senior capstone class. Um, I took this class because I think it's really incredible and important to talk about food. And um, food is something that brings everyone together, it seems, in my mind. Um, it brings people and animals and everyone, everyone comes together with food. So it's a very important topic and wonderful topic. Um, so my favorite food, my food journey starts with avocados. Um, this was my favorite vegetable as a kid. Um, it might still be my favorite vegetable now. Um, it's hard to know what my favorite vegetable is, but I really love avocados. Um, I like them because I think they're super delicious and very versatile. Um, I like that they're a beautiful green color and they're they have this yummy, fatty, buttery texture and flavor to them. I think they're really delicious. Um, and there's many different types of avocados. Um, I grew up eating Haas or Hass avocados. Um, so avocados grow in Southern California. They also grow in central and even parts of South America. So, um, but the majority of avocados that are produced for the world globally um, start in Mexico. And then, as I said here in this slide, 90% of the avocado production for the US is in Southern California. So right in my little home, my roots. Um, so here I'm sharing a recipe that my mom used to make. Um, I remember eating this as a kid um, during the summertime. Um, the avocados are best in the summertime. Um, so I, I remember eating this after, like in the evenings with dinner um, on summery nights after going and spending a day at the lake or spending time tending to a garden when um, you feel all warm inside because the sun is out and this is just a delicious recipe. So um, my tip with this recipe is make sure you are carefully cutting an avocado. Um, a lot of people cut and hold an avocado in their hand like this and cut like this. And that can be really dangerous because you can you can really hurt your hand. So be careful when you're cubing your avocado to not cut it like that. Make sure you're putting it on a surface so that you do not hurt yourself. Um, but it's a really yummy recipe. I definitely recommend this. Um, so my next part of my food journey is with oranges. So my ancestors are from Italy. My dad's side of the family immigrated here um, to America from Italy. Um, so my dad grew up with a strong Italian culture and he raised me and my sister with that same um, culture. So we learned a lot about um, Italian cuisine and Italian language um, and Italian just general culture. Um, yeah, so I feel very blessed to have that in my life. Um, my last name Ferrara is even, there's a place in Italy called Ferrara and I even got to visit there one, one summer. I even went to Ferrara. It was incredible. So I found out that some oranges, that oranges grow in Italy. So not all oranges grow in Italy, but but Italy has a large orange production. Um, which I thought was amazing because as I told you, 
the, the mountain that I grew up on, the valley, when we would go down into the valley, there was a lot of, it, it was bountiful with food there. A lot of produce grew in the valley of um, my hometown. And the biggest, the biggest, the biggest um, produce production was oranges there. So when I found out that oranges grew also in Italy, I felt this beautiful connection between where I grew up and where my ancestors grew up. So I felt really happy that I could share um, such a delicious food with some of my ancestors. Um, so the top picture here is a picture of some beautiful oranges growing on a tree. I think that that is just one of the best visuals. I love seeing oranges grow and they smell so good on the tree and they're just incredible. They look like sunshine. Um, and then below that is a map of Italy. So it classically looks like a boot. Um, that's what everyone says about Italy. Um, yeah. So lastly, um, this is, let me move that so it's a little bit better. There we go. So this, I have a recipe to a traditional Italian cake um, from Sicily. Um, uh, this is a recipe, sorry. Um, so in this recipe, you actually use an entire orange, which I think is so yummy. I love using a f an entire fruit or vegetable for something, which is, I think it's very satisfying. Um, so I like this recipe a lot. Um, we often make this during Christmas time. Um, oranges and citrus in general are very integrated in my family's um, Christmas traditions. Every year, Santa brings me an orange at the toe of my stocking. So every, since I was a baby, I remember always getting an orange um, in my stocking. And it was, I would always eat the orange as I was opening up on my presents and it's a lovely memory. Um, so oranges and Christmas time are very connected to me. Um, and then lastly, about this cake, just a fun fact about my own self, um, I have celiac disease, which affects my diet. Um, I have to be gluten-free. I can't have any wheat at all, no wheat. Um, so, uh, and a lot of Italian people have this disease. It is very common among Italian people. Um, so it's another way that I feel very connected to my culture, even though it's a very um, hard and frustrating to, disease to have. It's also really beautiful to think about how my ancestors and other people from Italy um, struggle with the same thing. Um, so anyway, the only thing it really changes as far as my recipe goes, is that my cakes would always be gluten-free. So my recipe is a little bit different than this one, but this is a good standard recipe. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you get to eat some beautiful avocados and some beautiful oranges soon. Thanks so much.